Detroit. Yeah. Life. Yes. That's what I'm talking about, man. You know, welcome everybody to the J. Floyd Speaks Life podcast, man. This is like season two, episode three, I believe. Um, again, number one, this is going to be my first episode ever that I am live streaming, uh, that I'm streaming video. I said live streaming. I'm really, I'm streaming video. So um, the audio is being recorded for the podcast at the same time as the video is being recorded. So it's going to take me a little time to get used to, but I love seeing y'all. I love y'all seeing me. We get to interact a little bit more, and you know your boy is all about that human interaction. So um, let's do this, man. Um, welcome, as always, to the family room. You know, this is where I record all of my podcasts, except this time you get to see it. Um, you get to see what the family room looks like, man. Um, this this episode, man, let me let me waste no time in getting into this because this one is a um I wanna begin. Um it kind of starts on a on, on a pretty, pretty somber note, man. I know everybody has been rocked by the um the passing of Kobe Bryant, man. And um listen, man, you know, I, I know you know, I hear a lot, of, you know, people will you know, it's hard to deal with when someone that has this kind of impact passes away. You know, you'll you'll see some people that say, you know, why, you know, why is there so much attention being paid to it? You know, it's, we do we worship celebrities? I don't. I wouldn't go there with it. I would say number one, this person put in a lot of work. Kobe Bryant put in a lot of work to aim for his goals, and he hit them. You know what I mean? And anybody. We all living in life. We all got struggles, and we know how hard it is to hit your goals. So when you see somebody who's who's working that hard and aiming for a high target and they're hitting it, that kind of person impacts everybody. You know, it's not really about the fame. In this circumstance, the fame comes from the fact that he was able to work with what he was given and master it to the point where he impacted a lot of people. And the dopest thing about Kobe, man, in my opinion, is that he not only took the, the basketball aspect of mastering sports and getting up hard and working out, the five in the morning workouts, the Mamba mentality. He literally took that Mamba mentality and and made it cross over into life. So it became some, it more of a philosophy of how to approach life. It wasn't really about you know, getting up and getting in the gym only. It wasn't about working on the pump fake and the drop step only. You know, it became something that was bigger that can apply to everybody. And for me, I love that. That's my whole thing. You know, when you could take your with your lane, struggle, work through the struggles, master it, and make it something larger that you can then pass on to other people to help them with their struggles. I mean, that's what we're doing here. In my opinion, that is it. So man, listen. I was I was really hurt, really shook up by the passing of Kobe and his daughter Gianna Bryant, um, the Mamba and the Mamba Sita. They will be sorely missed in this world. But I know God got them. God has a plan, and God don't make no mistakes. So we rest in that. We don't sit in the sadness. We can feel the sadness. We process it. We go back, you know, just like I did yesterday. I was with my kids. You know, I hugged my kids, spent time with them. You know, they was they was like saying stuff and running crazy, and it was frustrating me. And you know, it gave seeing that news gave me a different perspective because I was starting to get frustrated with what. And I'm like, you know, let me let me stop for a minute and just, you know, even in the frustration, I appreciated them, and I loved them in the moment, man. It was like, you know, thank you God for this moment. So, you know, I just wanted to give just a few minutes. I think it deserves that of just talking about the life of Kobe Bryant, man. So rest in peace to Kobe and Gianna Bryant. Um, our, our, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to the Altabelli family, family, the Chester family, the Mauser family, the Zobayan family, and everybody else who had and lost loved ones in that helicopter accident. Amen. We say prayers for him, man. So with with you know with that being said, I said we celebrate, we celebrate life. Um, we we move on to looking at you know more um, 
events that's coming up, um, you know, ways that we can, you know, as we still struggle through this life, as we still feel the pain of loss and loved ones, man, we can still, you know, learn to let their memory live on and we celebrate them, man. You know, we got the Super Bowl coming up, the biggest event in sports, man. The Super Bowl is coming up. My beloved 49ers are in this Super Bowl. My beloved 49ers playing the Kansas City Chiefs, man. Listen, I know, you know, I'm from Cleveland, man. I'm, I'm born and raised here, um, right here in Brownstown, man. And, you know, I get a lot of people that's like, man, how are you a 49ers fan, bro? How did it happen? You know, real quick story. And, and, you know, listen, life is what life is, man. You know, when I was growing up, I was not a sports fan as a young kid. I was a little nerdy guy. You know what I mean? I was more into comic books than sports. Sports didn't really hit me like that. But my big brother, it did. You know, he was all about it. So, you know, he would, you know, arrange the neighborhood football games and, you know, tell me about all about football. He really wanted to push me into football. And so I started, you know, trying my best and I never really got into it. I would be like, yo, I like Christian Okoye. And he'd be like, man, get out of here with that dude. He don't win nothing. Or I'd be like, you know, I like so and so this player and he'd be like man get out of here he's like you know the real squad is the 49ers look at what they doing they got a real team they got a real uh gm they got a real coach they work as a team look at the uh they got the best players they got the best plays the owner is eddie debartolo jr from right here in ohio man and he he is the owner of the mall that you go shop at you know and he pieced all that together for me so you know i didn't become a fan of them in that moment, that was his team. But when, when you know, in 1992, when my brother was killed, um, you know, it, during my grieving, part of, uh, you know, one of the things that I latched on to was sports because he loved it so much. So, you know, after that, you know, I would see football and it'd be like, oh, man. And it, it took on a whole new life. A whole new life after that. It was like I loved. I wanted to know all about the owners and the, and the GMs, and you know, I wanted to know the plays. What plays are they calling? And do they have the best players? It was all. It was on, you know. And then the first time I saw the 49ers play, I had I had to root for them because um, you know that was my connection to my brother. So to this day, here we are, twenty eight years later. And here we are, man. For I got I got my Ronnie Lott classic black and red jersey up in here. It's the new jersey, but the classic Ronnie Lott uh, official jersey. You know, I, I'm ro I'm rocking. I'm ready, man. Um, now I know this is the Super Bowl edition of my show, so I probably should give like a uh, a Super Bowl pick. But nah, man, you know what? Here's the thing. And I know y'all might say this is a cop out. No, I don't really get into picks. I don't really even like all that fantasy and gambling and all of that, you know, betting. That's not really my thing because it takes away from the actual game. You know what I mean? If I hop on here and be like, oh, my beloved Niners are going to win, uh, you know, 27-17. Then when I'm watching the game, I'm going to be all stressed out about 27-17 instead of just trying to enjoy my squad playing in a great game, you know? So I, I really stay away from the uh, from the picks, man. I don't really do all of that. Uh, you know where my heart is at. It's right there. Um, I will be rooting for my boys and hoping that they win a million to zero. That's what's up. So, um, oh, yeah, you know, my, I'm rocking this shirt. Fasat, you'll see, shout out to my homeboy, Sean Curry, from my church, man. Fasat stands for Fit, Saved, and Over 30. My man has his um, apparel line, man. If you are interested in that, you know, he got he has a lot of workout gear, a lot of other things that's coming up, man. If you want to get into something that's really believer-based and something positive, go check out my man. Uh, the website is I am I A M F S O T dot com. I am Fasat dot com. Check it out, man. And go see it. Maybe you can get this shirt like mine, except you'll have to pay for it. I did not. That's what's up. So, yo, today's message, man, um, is based in football. But, you know, I'm shouting out to Eric. This is a universal message. I don't want anybody to think this is just for the fellas. My ladies get down with the game just as much as we do, sometimes even more. 
And um, speaking of which, shout out to my beloved 49ers for having the first female coach for an NFL team in the Super Bowl. Katie Sauer is doing her thing. Uh, that's monumental, man. So to begin this, man, this is going to be a full-on life coach lesson, man. Life coach session. Um, I will not give you um, a breakdown or, or a pick for the game, but I am going to give you keys to our game, man. You know, very few of us will ever get to play in the Super Bowl, but a lot of us get faced with challenges every day, right? A lot of us get faced with adversity, opponents, and huge challenges, sometimes in front of large crowds every day. Every day in life is a challenge where we got to line up and we got to play in our own Super Bowls. Right, So what I'm breaking down today is keys to the game of life, right? Not keys to the football game. So let's, let's, uh, really, let's break this down, man. Number one, the most important thing to remember as you go through all of your adversities, your trials, your challenges, number one is execute the basics, right? And you're going to see this play out on Sunday in the Super Bowl. Both of these teams are heavy play action teams. Play actions when you fake the run, you don't hand the ball off, you end up with the ball, you pass it, right? Now, the reason why play action works is because the basic power runs and zone runs are so ingrained in these teams that the players execute the plays exactly the same, whether it's really going to be a run or whether it's a fake run and it's a pass, right? There's no difference in how they begin and execute that play. The offensive linemen, the fullback, even the wide receivers. There's no difference in the way that they start that play. The execution is the same. It's the only way it can work. So what does this mean for us in life? What's the transition in life? Well, it means we have to master the basics, right? There's no room for slacking off. Everything has to begin the same. My morning ritual the same. I don't start something without finishing it, right? Don't be a 95% person. Don't look for, just for credit for, oh, man, I just kind of went through it. Put your all into everything. You know, you might be, here's the circumstance for a lot of us. A lot of us may be working a job that's not our end goal. You know, it's not the pass 30 yards downfield. It's the handoff for two yards, right? But you execute that bad boy because you never know when you're going to get that 30-yard pass downfield. So you got to constantly execute and practice and have your behavior be the same. You bring that 110% to the job you got now, to the activities you're doing now, to the circumstance you got now, right? There's a lot of people right now that have businesses and maybe they want to be a social media influencer along with that business. Well, you got to start executing first. You know, like my man Manny Hall always tells people, man, and shout out to my man Manny Hall, Manny Hall and Associates. He, he'll tell people, you got to really build your audience first. You can't just come out the gate saying, I'm a social media influencer. Let me pay for all of these ads. Who's going to watch? to add you got to build the foundation first and that starts with executing showing who you are play action works because a team proves that they can run and they look like they're going to run and it's going to work so when you set out to defend it boom flip it flip it on them that's what i'm saying so number one the keys to the game execute the basics man execute no matter what man whether you're in the job that's not the right way or they're not right pay for what you really want, whether you're just doing what you can do to pay for what you, you know, to fund what you want to do, all of that, man. Any entrepreneur that's just working a nine to five and don't want to be working a nine to five, man, execute it, execute it. You know, you never know when you finally do get that break and in the entrepreneurship, what are the, look at all the skills that you're going to have built up by showing that you execute every time. Boom, boom, boom. There's no slacking. All right? So number two, keys to the game. Number two, play as a unit. I had the opportunity to go out and speak to the Cleveland Heights football team, my Heights Tigers, um, and it was a, an opportunity of a lifetime, man. It meant a lot to me. Shout out to uh, 
Coach Hicks, man, for bringing me out. I really appreciate you, man. Shout out to the entire coaching staff at Heights High, man. I love y'all. Um, and one of the things I talked about was playing as a unit. You know, you got to make sure that you are able to not just be you, right? It ain't about just you. You have to be a piece of a unit. That's what I mean by that, right? You got to be okay with that. You know, right, let me give you an example of how it's going to play out in this game. Pat Mahomes, as dope as he is, Pat Mahomes is not going to stroll out there on Sunday and trot out there by himself and face off against the vaunted 49er defense, all 11 of them. You know what I'm saying? Imagine that have Pat Mahomes just trot out there, number 15, boom. No linemen, no receivers, no tight end, no backs. My man just eh, run out there with a the ball. You know you know how it is. He bend down, say a couple words, hike it to himself. You know what I'm saying? Stroll back. If he's not smashed to smithereens immediately, throw a pass to nobody. And I mean, I know that's silly, but I mean, what I'm trying to do is paint this vivid picture to you. These people are successful and they're in this exhibition to, on Sunday that millions of people will watch. And the reason why is because it's not just one person making this stuff happen. They're moving as a unit. They're moving as a unit. So what does this mean for us? That means get your team together. Get your squad up. That's what that means for us, right? I'm speaking to myself too because this has been a weakness in my business and in my operations, right, of not understanding when it's time to not do everything and when it's time to squad up, all right? So I see a ton of entrepreneurs. I know a ton of entrepreneurs. Very few entrepreneur teams. I don't know many, right? So maybe we start to change that. And I say we, because again, this is a challenge for myself as well. If you got a clothing line and I do motivational speaking, let's squat up, right? Because maybe when your clothing line is being presented, you need somebody who can rally people up. And when, so, you know, and vice versa, and it, and it goes into every different aspect. It's a, in order to succeed, a team needs a ton of people. So would you rather succeed and then people start to tell you or, you know, even have an idea and people start to tell you this would be great if you would execute it, boom, 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 or not even make it because you don't have people who are great at the B, the C, the D, the E, the F, the G. You know what I'm saying? You could have a tough A game. But without the rest, man, you might have you might be going up against the 49ers defense by yourself. You know? So let's look at it and let's squad up when needed, man. The strength in numbers. The strength in numbers. Even when we get to pray, God says where two or more come together in his name. So even God is setting the blueprint that he wants us to come together. All right? Well, let's do that, man. Number three, my third and final point, man. Stay on schedule. And, you know, you'll hear this a lot. I know you'll probably hear it about the 49ers offense coming up in this game. Stay on schedule, right? And what they're talking about is down and distance. When you start at first and 10, you should have a play that try that is less risk reward, that's less boom or bust, so that when you're in second and third down, you're not second and 10, third and 15 fourth and 20. Those are behind schedule, right? Get on schedule means you get a second and a second and five, third and three. You know what I mean? The more manageable downs. That way you get more options presented to you in the playbook. You ever heard them always say, you know, when you get third and 40, third and 20, they, you know, the announcer will always say, not many players in the playbook for this one. Yeah, there's not. It means your options are limited. So how, what does this mean for us in life? It means, number one, we're all sinners, right? And we all fall back. We all drop the ball. We all fumble. We, we don't execute properly. Every challenge leads to another challenge, just like these downs, just like these turnovers, right? 
Sometimes we score and celebrate. You know, we might we might get that. But sometimes we fumble. Sometimes we throw it away and get picked. You know, sometimes we get scored on. We don't always execute right. But any challenge, we may fail. But God can strengthen us to try it again. But when we're working with that, we can't take God for granted, right? We have to be smart with what we're doing and understand the down and distance, right? It means we got to put in work too. We can't just lay down and pray and wake up and do nothing and expect that God's just going to shower us with every heart, all of our heart's desires. It's not really the way it works, right? We can pray and we can make our desires known, but then we have to get up and God, what God's going to do is pour into us the energy, the strength, the encouragement, and this also is to put the right people around us and the right um, the right uh, situations. And those situations are going to be challenging. So sometimes the answer to our prayers is a challenge, right? And so a lot of us we go for self and we mess it up, you know, and we we might be set back. We might be a little set back. It's okay. God can still rock with us. We got to know where we are at right now, you know? And I want to encourage anybody who's at third and 15 or fourth and 20, because trust me, I've been there and probably will be again at some point. And God can get us out of that too. You know, God sees us through that too. Unlike those coaches on the sideline, God does have a play for that. But here's the thing, just like those coaches on the sideline, God's play for that means we got a very, we got a much smaller margin of error, right? Means we got to do a whole lot more. We can't slip coming out of our break, man. It's fourth and 20. It's fourth and 20. Things are going to be a little harder. We got to go more precise. So, you know, if you do things like, um, you know, there's things we can set ourselves back with, you know, we might get off track with our life. We might get off track with our education. We might get off track with our family. We might, you know, have a, a broken family situation or a blended family situation that we have to do. We might have had a uh, single parent situation going on. We might have had a college dropout or a high school dropout or a, a, a jail conviction situation going on. You know what I'm saying? We all been there. Toss me on a few of those. But here's the thing. God's going to dial up some plays for us if we want him to. If we rely on him, we can see his play. But then because of us being a little set back, we got to work a little harder. So then once we, if we can get that out, right, we get that first down. Now we can move a little more intelligently, right? Now when it comes time, you know, when it's another, we finally get out of that and we like, whoo, and then it's first and 10, and we looking around at the opposition and we go to call that play, we might not call the triple flea flicker, double reverse, uh, super pad. We might not call that. We might not pull out our own play. We might not ignore what the coach told us. We might not ignore what our center is telling us about where the blitz are coming from. We might not do that. We get a little smarter after that, right? We saw how God had to help us and we had to struggle even harder and still will. Because now we're down by seven, down by 14, but we're still in the game. So now we move a little smarter. You know, the center say something and we listen. We're like, man, I ignored you last time. And man, I got sacked for 50 yard loss. Last time the coach called in uh, ZY right triple banana. And I call my own play that I remembered from high school. I had a wide open receiver, but I called my own play I remember from high school, and I ran. And I, I got a loss, and I got a, uh, I got hurt. I had to miss a couple, couple plays. You know what I'm saying? We may not have executed this plan well, and then we needed some miracles, and God got the miracles. You know, and then the Holy Spirit slide in and convict us a little bit, but we get a little smarter. We're calling them plays and really being coachable, right? Yeah, leave it to a life coach to come a full circle around to being coachable, man. So, yo, that 
is my uh, number three point. Keys to the game. Keys to the game of life. Number one, execute and master the basics. Number two, play as part of a unit, something greater than you. Number three, stay on schedule, man. Put in the work. Put in the work. We don't just wait and throw everything on other people or hope that God's going to just do all of it. We got to step up and handle what's been assigned to us, right? Our accountability, our ownership. You got to own it. That's what's up. Yo, so again, I thank y'all so much for joining me, man. This was a good one. This felt kind of good. I think I got kind of into it. Let me know if y'all liked it, man. Let me know if you need, if you want any tweaks. Let me know if you are, uh, if it was any kind of problem, if, if part of it was weird. I don't know, man. Hit me up and let me know, man. But I love y'all. Thank y'all for joining me, man. Go 49ers. And hop back again next week, man. One.